Yeah, so we're at Drake's Island today. It's just off the south coast of England uh, in Plymouth, which is steeped in military naval history for the uh, historians amongst us. So this island has been used and is still used to this day by the Royal Marines commandos. So it's a bit of a nod back to sort of myself and Louis and, and our heritage really within the Royal Marines commandos and special forces as well. So the majority of the time I've spent down here on the water or in the water has been diving with the SBS, always been on the boat and the water, but they specifically use this island for sort of beach landings, assaults. So they'll bring the guys in at night, a couple of boats, crews up, beach landing, and then there's sort of this kind of stuff that's set up here for high access and ladder climbs and all that stuff. And then the guys will move through and assault, you know, enemy positions and all that kind of stuff. So what the fuck are we doing here today? So through dark, we've decided to come in. We've got some, uh, well, we're leaning into the help and, uh, and support of our friends at uh, Complete Commando. So Paul, one of the guys that owns Complete Commando, was a Royal Marines commando for years. He's a very experienced mountain leader. So he's coming out here to help us today and fix some ropes. We're gonna have some abseils, some climbing, some technical stuff. But predominantly we're here to test some of the new clothing range. So something that I'm wearing today is the new Thrudark Ithax lightweight synth uh, synthetic down jacket and of course some of the existing products as well. So we're gonna be putting them through their paces in a variety of activities. So yeah, hope you like it. Yeah, I think so. The, the main three focuses are the Aegis, Fellas and Ithax. So George has got the Ithax on there. Um, Aegis is one of these. And then is there a Velez out? No. no. We'll show you a Velez later. Um, those are our main focuses. So if in doubt, if you're not sure what to put on, just put one of them on. So obviously moving around the island today, um, just be conscious of any sort of slips, trips, falls either side of the scaffold. That's why that's in, in place and play at this point in time. If you are moving be below any of the roping areas, um, just be conscious, obviously, of sort of your surroundings. Um, if guys are coming down, etc., items falling from height and uh, bits and bobs like that. And again, if you're up on the sort of platforms with cameras and stuff, just make sure obviously they're either secured um, at height and any items are sort of stowed in either a zip pocket. Um, if you're sort of taking taking part in anything, just make sure you get checked off with your harnesses and kit from ourselves, basically, um, before you sort of go off. And then essentially, like any any sort of uh, rings, jewellery, and that side of things, or hair, just make sure it's sort of tied back if you're doing any abseiling or, or sort of working at height throughout the day, basically. Um, any other sort of further points specific to the stance, then I'll sort of brief you up, basically. Hi. Fucking cool is that? Old school cannons. It's facing the wrong way, mine. It's facing back towards fucking <laughs> mainland, but details. That's cool, isn't it? Look Yes, we're just scoping the island at the minute, looking for some um, locations for abseils and climbing, technical stuff. Um, fucking hell, if you look back at where we were, I guess, six years ago, myself and Louis, when we, we left the Special Forces, and we sort of went into this world, this outdoor fucking clothing world, you know, how hard can it be? Um, it was just me and him at the time, you know, and it was, it was really raw. It was myself and him out with a fucking phone, a mobile phone at best at times, and we were just testing the kit and equipment. And I think that was quite, there's something quite honest about that as well. Um, We've always tried to sort of 
lead with authenticity and credibility whenever we're testing the garments and show people as well what we're doing and why we're doing it and and that's that's evolved now and as we stood here today um, sort of six years on we've got an amazing team that are surrounding us you know to help us facilitate our our sort of our idea, our creation, our kind of vision for what we want the clothing and the brand to look like across social media platforms and onto the website as well. So, you know, the guys have got incredibly talented. You know, we've got videographers, photographers, you know, two or three of these people that are, are here full time to sort of really knock this out of the park with us in terms of content creation. Because ultimately that's what it's all about for us. You know, we're a direct to consumer brand. All of our stuff is online, the majority of it. And it's about being aspirational. It's about inspiring, hopefully people to get out, to sort of test themselves, push themselves beyond their limits. You know, our strap line endeavor through adversity. This is what it's all about. So I'm excited today. I'm excited to get in and get sort of stuck into some of the, uh, the ab sales and really put the clothing to test as well and, and sort of show that to you guys. That's a good kit, isn't it? Full extension. Yeah, really like this. Yeah, what's that helmet you're wearing, Tommy? Oh, it's Petzl. Who are Petzl? They're a really profound, well-known, massively respected climbing and equipment brand. Oh, brilliant. So it's probably vital that we have protection and equipment that looks after us and that is capable and up to the spec and job. More than absolutely. We wouldn't be here without them. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice boots. Oh, thank Tommy. you. Yes, these yeah. are Scarpa. Oh, what a Scarpa. They're an Italian uh, mountaineering climbing boot manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, again, it's vital that we have amazing footwear we, exactly just we we'd have wet feet if we didn't <laughs> <laughs> we're, uh, we're gonna have to work on the subtlety with this oh is that too like, force? yeah that it's, too... it's a little bit obvious okay. if i'm being honest okay what? let's do it again yeah. less force yeah. okay what i helmet love your you helmet <laughs> tommy <laughs> i love your helmet can i have a look at your helmet <laughs> Why do you need descendants? Let's get rid of these. How much are they? Quite a lot. And they're fully obviously waterproof and all that kind of shit. Yeah. So you swim with it as on part of your kit. They're like uh, neut uh, neutrally buoyant and stuff like that. Are they? Yeah. That is clever. Mm. Quite impressed by this actually. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, commonly referred to in the uh, special forces world as a king rat. So we use these uh, predominantly when we were diving, so subsurface, getting to task and onto target. So imagine like a ship or an uh, uh, offshore energy installation, an oil rig, something like that. We would dive in, in the teams, we take this sort of kit and equipment and other various pieces of kit and equipment to get the teams onto uh, the rig or the vessel. And this, uh, it, this in particular would be roped up by somebody and you'd simply just clip yourself into a strong point, up and down, super simple, carry all uh, a fully laden operator with all their uh, weapons, plate carriers, uh, all their mission essential kit and equipment, get them onto task smoothly, quickly, quietly as well, more importantly. So it's good to see one of these today back in action. So uh, let's see if I can remember how to use one. Use that to get to the top. You want to go up, shape up the top, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, up there, I feel obviously that's because you're our point and you're aware. Lovely bit of B roll. Yeah. Spider pig. Spider pig. I'm taking down to the stars a bit. Is that a bird? Good view from down there, isn't it? Hiya. You might need to move the way, but... That, that is the worst bit. This is our first ab sale of the day. Um, we're going to try and find some more, but the only issue with this is that we can't, ideally, you'd want to build a lot of space between me on one rope with the camera and the person doing the ab sale. So we'd want to be like over here just to get a, a bit more depth. That's not going to be an option. So we'll, we'll have to, if we do anything side by side, we'll just have to be right next to them. Shoot quite tight. But there's some good angles from the floor. Where you can you can isolate them a little bit more. It's kind of tricky because all the 
all the trees are like coming out off the edge of the cliff. So it just makes it hard to get that clean silhouette. But make it work. Yeah, so the guys, obviously Paul and the guys at Complete Commando set up a fucking brilliant uh, stance, a great rig for us here. And the, the idea is just to uh, to abseil. So I'll get uh, myself and a few of the other guys will just be running through all the time uh, until we've got the shots. So it's an abseil stance essentially, but on one line we've got a straight straight down rope for an abseil. Next to it currently set up is that king rat, the thing that we spoke about earlier. Uh, that's just to get people up very quickly if we need to, but we're just probably gonna reconfigure it so it's rather than the, the current lip where it sits, it's a bit of a nose to climb over and uh, not that glamorous. So we're gonna have a, a little reshuffle, re a relook at that as well, but we don't necessarily need it. It's, it's just a, it's a nice to have and it adds another little bit of uh, More, dynamic mate, to the, the technical side of the climbing and introduces the kit and stuff like that. So. We'll work it out. So you get the yeah. Little mossy crag. Whoop bar. Yeah. Just take, lean back, take the tension. How's it looking? Do you want the honest answer? <laughs> yeah. Shit. What needs to change? The location. Uh, we need to... <laughs> <laughs> we can't say that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the position of the rope in a different location. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what we need flat. is we need to take the rope and put it on another island. Um, it's just too flat, there's no depth, and it kind of just makes it look 2D and not like through dark enough. It's that issue I was talking about at the start. It's like you can't, you can't get a solid angle because there's too much trees like just getting in the way. Mm. You, you can't isolate your, your subjects at all. Um. So basically, it's proving really difficult to get like properly nice shots. There's just too many trees. This stuff's all in the way. Um, it's blocking light and it's mainly blocking the view. Um, I can't feel my legs anymore, which is a nice addition to the struggles. But, you know, I'm having a lovely time. Hanging about. It's a fun day out. Um, we'll definitely get some images, it's just not... How's it hanging? Oh, it's great, mate. We're having a lovely time. You're good. Yep. Your knees. Ow. Hey. You look professional. <laughs> My knees. Oh, sweet. I'm definitely not eating a Mars bar. That'd be fine, that mate. Yeah. <laughs> Liquid death. The death of dehydration. Fucking How would you rate your uh, abset in today? Uh, okay, these names. This will be interesting. Steady, steady B minus. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah? I think that's where he finished. I think where he started, it was a steady F. Freddy for fail. Alright. <laughs> Obviously after some expert tuition from myself, we got him that's as much as I could do with him, even with my expertise and guidance, get him to a steady B minus. We'll work on it though. Started, Fair enough. Started at the top. <laughs> Quick, quickly went downhill. <laughs> it was constructive. It was a strong start. I'll give you that. The positives were you look cool because you're wearing through dark. It's probably your saving grace to be honest with you. I'm not talking because I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh it's um, liquid death, Are you gonna drink it, looks like a can of beer, I wish it was but it's inside. not, it's um, severed lime, basically lime, mm. uh, flavoured sparkling water.
watch this. <sighs> Delicious. Hey, it'll good. fucking kill you. It just looked like a like a tinny, doesn't it? Yeah. Is it hydrate or die trying? <laughs> So that's essentially, the, for the bulk of what we're shooting, it's we're going to be in the tunnels going through all the close-ups of the product the and then two, cutting out to cool action that. shots. Yeah, exactly. Okay, wicked. Right, and cool. then we won't need to do this until the evening. So. Okay, cool. Go again. <laughs> We've managed in true through dark fashion to find some dark and moodiness on the island, uh, Drake Island. So we've got some underground kind of tunnel systems that obviously they were used back in the day for sort of ferrying people and kit and equipment during the war. So yeah, we're just setting up for a, a bit of a shoot. So a completely different kind of look and feel, but again, it's just sort of uh, walk through, talk throughs of, of some of the new kit and equipment that we've got coming in. So yeah, here we are. Thank you. Let's get that bit. <laughs> yeah, jump cut. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm hooked to that. Not that much attitude. Once the, once the boys have set up and got the anchor point sorted, which they're preparing now, we're going to drop the line over. And uh, this is going to be dropped down the other side. Now, this sort of, it's called a caving ladder, um, for those that don't know. And it sort of brings back many a memory of uh, my time in Special Forces. Uh, in the SBS in particular, we used to use this stuff a lot. So getting onto access points, high access points, um, we'd dive with this equipment. It'd be attached to kind of uh, um, strong points, uh, hooks, all that kind of stuff, and collapsible poles. Uh, and we'd use it to sort of gain access again to uh, offshore energy installations and, uh, and the like, and, and vessels and bits and pieces. That would then be dropped down to the team. They can be extended as well. Uh, there's around about 10 meters in length, but you can connect more ladders to it. And obviously, it's a, a higher climb, and I've spent many a, a time holding on to these for dear life, with full operational kit, equipment, you know, plate carriers, helmets, night vision, weapon systems, ballistic uh, plates, and uh, comms kit, and all that kind of good stuff. So, generally speaking, you you've got an extra maybe. 20, 25 kilogram on top of your body weight, and that's usually after a, an epic infill, so a, a, a swim or a, a tactical dive uh, towards the um, the objective. So yeah, caving ladders sort of bring back some disgusting memories of uh, hanging out or trying to hang in or hang onto the onto the ladders. So there's a thing in um, in the service where if you're a peeler, uh, that sort of follows you round for the rest of your career. If you ever peel off a ladder because your your arms blow out or you can't sort of carry on because you're weak, uh, you get known as a, or get labeled a peeler. Thankfully, I never peeled a ladder climb in my life. I'm just gonna curse myself. We'll see what happens now. But yeah, uh, look forward to uh, cracking on with this. So, right on timing, heaven's open, which is good for us, good for this jacket. I just want to go through a couple of details around the Aegis. So, it's our top end premium three layer waterproof jacket. The event membrane within this is phenomenal in terms of the hydrostatic head. That means simply its level of breathability against its level of waterproofing is super high. In fact, again, today's perfect conditions because even though it is raining, um, it is actually on the warm side, 11, 12 degrees. So again, perfect uh, opportunity to, to trial this out. So just to run through a couple of the details around it, obviously the fit of it, um, the membrane and fabric itself gives you a lot of movement, a lot of flexibility. Uh, we've just been up on the ladder now and again, just you don't feel restricted. So the fabric is, um, is a big story around it. The feature set of it is exactly in everything that you need it to be, whether you're in the mountains or whatever you're doing activity-wise, um, gives you good access and storage. So obviously it's one front zip um, and it's also a double zip as well. So if you are belaying like we've been today, um, you just open this up, give yourself a little bit of room. 
It's also got a retention button at the bottom, uh, which is really helpful just in case it is windy. Uh, just to do that helps you to, to do the overall zip um, itself. So that goes all the way to the top. And as I have my hood up, it uh, gives you full protection. Um, in terms of pockets, straight into here with, again, big gloves on at the moment for uh, repelling, but easy pulls on here, right side and left side, uh, Napoleon pockets. And then the same along each, uh, each side of the jacket. So again, straight into the, in terms of the adjustability of the hood, um, that's at the back here. Um, so if you do want to cinch it in, if it is blowing really bad, then you can just protect it. Again, as you can see, I'm wearing a helmet at the moment, so it's fully compatible with, with a helmet. You throw loads of water over you there. <laughs> um, so it goes over easily there as well. Just to run through um, in terms of the, the inside of it. Um, so you've got quick kind of valuable stash pocket um, on this side. Um, and then you've also just got um, a really uh, elasticated uh, super access pocket here. Again, you would just, just quickly take your clothes off. If you're done, you wanted to just keep those inside your jacket. Again, just e either stow them or, or kind of try, try to uh, uh, dry them out, then that's, that's really useful. So the Aegis jacket currently in line, available to buy a top end waterproof jacket. Sean, I just gave an instruction here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. Are you just nicking my model? Yeah. For sake. What do you mean? You don't want to get that shot? No. That's a lie. That's a lie. You know it. Yeah, nice and fast. Go. Make sure that goes in, mate, because it looks like he ain't got a clue what he's doing. <laughs> That's not going in. That's <laughs> not. <laughs> cool, all done. talk very quickly uh, through some of the new women's range uh, which includes the Ithax of the lightweight insulated down jacket superbly modeled by Haley. Thank, thank you, you. so uh, the Ithax is a synthetic lightweight down we've got it available in a non hood and a hooded version and a gilet version men and women's and the main differences really are, are all about the fit so if you just sort of do a quick spin around forward you see mainly around the sides and the backs it's just brought in slightly it's a bit more of a uh, a feminine fit or a cut that's the main sort of points of differences really throughout the jacket other than that 
the main sort of features remain the same uh, as they do across the men's and the women's range as well. The next one that we're going to talk about is our Aegis jacket. So our three layer um, event 20,000 water column test. It's our best in class uh, waterproof jacket that we currently have, hard shell. Again, not much changes in terms of the technical features to the men's. It is again mainly focusing around the fit of the jacket, so it's just sort of slightly tapered in towards the back, just to give a little bit more of a feminine cut and look uh, and, and feel to the jacket itself. So yeah, that's it really in terms of the main, uh, main differences. It's all around the cut and the fit uh, between the male and the female version. All right, one Let last me one. guess, do it again? Yeah, yeah. One yeah. last one. Just a bit fast. Record him saying that. Three. So many times. So I got one last one. One last one. <laughs> For the drone, then we get to the... <laughs> This is what I do to my kids. <laughs> you want to be done. <laughs> you know how I said done in three? That's your lot, mate. That's your lot. So, same as... So not like we did last time, like we did the first two times. Like you did the first two times. I can't remember what the first two were like, but they look good, so do whatever you did then. Do you want a body double it? Joyce, can I get it? I should do a favour, mate. <laughs> Where's my fucking can stunt you double? Film the next Where's my next? stunt double? Yeah. I didn't choose the model life. The model <laughs> life chose me. <laughs> It's a necessary evil for the brand of content shoots. Obviously we need lifestyle shoots for galleries, for websites, for social media. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. It's not the most exciting piece, but you know, the abseiling, all the high energy stuff's fucking ace to do, but you know, like any fucking job, some of it you've got to suck up and uh, get on with, I guess. But still, there's fucking worse things to be doing, isn't there? Being out in the fucking fresh air in some cool locations and obviously shooting a, a brand i'm fucking incredibly passionate about so yeah oh. i was super proud about it i'm still trying to figure out how exactly it works uh, the functionality um, um, but you know that's that's where development and research comes in uh, that's why we're here testing out and um yeah we do this so you don't have to Really excited to show you. This is probably our most innovative, incredible technology that we've launched to date. It's not this, you might be thinking, it's not, it's not these. It's this, and I am the first person in the world, world premiere, to don the technology. This doesn't stop there, just watch this. Not only does it keep your neck warm, it rolls up at the back, and you can adjust it. They're for thinking down there for dancing, here for keeping you warm. Can anybody get into a harness and make it look cool? Show me, show me that man. I mean, it's, it's pretty close. I'm pretty close. Caught my left nut. Always catches on something, doesn't it? The final stage is set. Last abseil. Just behind me, uh, down towards the uh, the water's edge, a couple of lines are set. One main abseil line that myself, Tom, and potentially Tommy are going to get onto, and then another line set uh, just off to the side of it. And we're going to throw Marcus down there, attached to the rope, obviously. Um, he's just going to use the uh, the King Rat cruise halfway down, get into a position, and then again just get that content shooting up down, and we'll run through as many times as we need to. One more time. <laughs> One more time. Oh, I guess it's famous words. Uh, but yeah, look, that's what we're here for. Just get the content and we're waiting probably 20 minutes left now till, till sunset. Sunset should just be behind us. Uh, it drops below that little tree line on the island. Um, and then we've got a bit of uh, packing kit up onto the boat and whoosh, high speed back to base. Oh, I'll do one quick up and then we'll get you into position, Marcus, yeah? yeah. I mean, Good.
weather gods have blessed us. Uh, that's us finished, final lab cell complete. So we're just going to bring George back up and a couple of the team that were down below. Collapse all the kit, equipment, have a quick debrief, fill the boats back to uh, mainland Plymouth and then back into the Talos vehicles and we're going to head home back to Paul. A successful day, mission complete, uh, testing complete and what a fucking glorious evening to end on. Nice.